Hello everyone. I uh, hope you're having a good day. Um, I'm starting to do some video tutorials, so this will be the first of, uh, of a little series that I'm going to do. This one's going to be on the Ice Palace Bomb Jump. Um, I've been wanting to make some content like this for a long time, but, uh, but uh, I have yet to learn some video editing software. That will be in the future, so unfortunately this will be all in one take, but hopefully it'll go over um, some of the basics that every player for Link to the Past should know or would want to know in terms of the Ice Palace bomb jump. I'm currently on emulator. I play on console normally, but for the sake of the tutorial, I'm going to be on emulator uh, in order to show some things more easily. Um, so first off, I recommend for everyone to get a Link to the Past practice hack. Um, that's what I'm currently using. I believe it was made by a poor little pinkus, and it's on version 9, if I'm not mistaken. I'm using an older version, it's a beta of version 9. But you can google that, um, just the, the practice hack, and it should come up. Great benefit, besides a lot of other features, is that you can quickly go to um, a, a part that you want to practice, in this case the Ice Palace Bomb Jump. So I will create a save state here, and I'll go over the bomb jump. A friend messaged me on Discord, and so, you know, if people want help or they're unsure about something, and if there's not a proper resource, I have no problem going over and helping. So I created, <laughs> I created save state here, and I'm gonna go over. Now, of course, the premise of the bomb jump is that you have these pegs up, and you're trying to uh, get yourself across. I'm not gonna go into too many specifics um, regarding bomb trajectory, but for all intents and purposes, what you're trying to do is you're trying to get within a very close um, X coordinate to the edge here. And then you want to position yourself on a specific Y coordinate in order to have a clean trajectory onto the land. Uh, it should be noted that um, something that trips up a lot of people when they start learning the bomb jump is they'll look at a visual cue that they'll find online in an image. Now those visual cues, they're really good. But something that might trip people up is that you'll notice that when I hold my sword out and I'm going to pause and go over here, um, you'll see how between this black line and the sword, there is a, a one pixel gap of color here. Um, this is because I am technically one pixel away from the wall. So when you hold left coming out of this doorway, you will be one pixel away from the wall. But if you fall and fail the bomb jump, and hold left, you'll see how there is no space here. I'm flush against the pixel. Uh, this can make it tricky for swing at the jump. You might have your position and then you mess it up and then you fall and then you're holding left trying to get again really quickly and then you're like why is it not looking right? Uh, that's a common little trap for a lot of players. In order to mitigate that, if you do fall, wait at least one frame and then hold left and you will be one pixel away from the black line. <laughs> so with that covered, that actually does change how the bomb jump works. There are flush against the wall jumps and one pixel away jumps. So if you're flush against the wall, um, and also bear with me, I don't normally play on the emulator, there is some input lag. But when you're flush against the wall, um, one thing you're really looking for, uh, at least for my own visual cues, some people will use a lynx hat uh, they'll use like this bar. Whatever visual cue works for you is good. I'll just tell you what I use and then you can find your own method. You know, obviously you're going to practice and play around with it. So do what you find comfortable. But I'll take Link's shadow and I'll look at these light little spots. And depending on the orientation of them that I have covered, I'll know whether my bomb jump is good. So for the most part, um, at this position against the wall, um, having these three little pixels here, or the two brighter ones. Um, that is a good position. And then from here, I can place a bomb, and then I need to move. Now, um, in this position, I believe there is only one pixel that will actually work. This is not the pixel here. I'll try and get it here. Oops. <laughs> it might take me a minute. So flush against the wall. You can use something like boots to try and help buffer to make it a little bit easier or safer. 
but here there are two pixel, two light pixels showing. And this is a position that you want. If you're flush against the wall and you place the bomb like this, uh, you need to have this one pixel gap between the bomb shadow and Link's sword. Now, if you don't have an upgrade sword, if you have the fighter, it'll actually be a two pixel gap. And that's what trips a lot of people up. If you have master, temper, or butter, it doesn't matter. They are all uh, homogenous in the sense where it will be the same one pixel. If you have fighter, it will be two. But given this position, this should be good. Indeed, it's good. And <laughs> I fell off of the edge there, but I'll, I'll show you um, one of the little subtle nuances to this trick. So now you see where I ended up. I ended up right here. Now, this successfully did the bomb jump, but this is not actually the best bomb jump that you can do. Um, in the speed run, normally you would actually want to be blown over here, and then you could hammer dash, and that would be the fastest speed technique. Now, if you're playing rando, if you're not gumboating a dungeon, it probably doesn't matter. But where you end up, actually, uh, like how you, you know, blow yourself across actually does matter. That is one simple way to set the bomb jump. It's somewhat lenient in where, like, even these extra pixels might still work. <laughs> um, this might still work. Yeah, so that still worked. So you saw how I wasn't even that close to the edge that still worked. So you definitely will want to play around with it. The main issue with this though, like this might be too much, right? Um, about five pixels here. That might be too much. Um, so most people learn how to do it this way, right? And I'll try and get as close to the edge. The closer you are to the edge typically means that you'll actually have a more lenient Y coordinate to set up, but not necessarily. Well, that's how you do the basic bomb jump, but the bomb jump that you ideally will want to eventually learn is the one pixel away bomb jump. The reason why I want to learn it is because you actually get a lot more leniency uh, across the board and you'll get a better bomb jump as well. Um, so for here, in this position, I have one light, light uh, pixel here. This is not as close to the edge as I can go. This is about one pixel away from the edge. So there's a little bit of safety here, um, but it's one pixel away. So I can place the bomb here. And in this case, this extra pixel will not work. You have to be at a different Y coordinate. I need to be one pixel higher. Oh, see, I messed up, so wait. And then hold it, it'll be one pixel away. Again, you can use uh, da um, dash buffering. This is the ideal position you want to be in. But for, for this example, we want to be here. So it's a little bit hard to see with the sparkle, but now the sword is flush with the shadow. Um, this will bomb me across to this position, in which case, you know, you might see speedrunners kind of go here, switch to the hammer, they're in this position, and then they'll do the hammer dash. And that's the ideal bomb jump that you can do. The absolute best way you can set this up though, is if you're one pixel away and you're actually where I was before, with none of these light pixels touching. If you're in this position, this is a prime position because with here, you actually get two pixel um, Y coordinates that will work. My sword is flush against the shadow, so this will work. Um, I'll create a separate save state. So this will work. Then also, I, I, I got it last second there, but you can be one pixel down and it will also work. <laughs> I got it again last second, but I'm trying to, trying to do it clean here. Yeah, okay, so now I have one pixel. And it'll work. And that is ideally how you do the bomb jump. There are a couple little additions. Ultimately, you will you might want to play with what, how you, you know, like to set up. But those are some key positions to take a hold of and to, you know, play around with yourself. You know, maybe try a pixel that way, a pixel this way. Um, again, emulator, practice hack, and save state will be very helpful for your own research. Um, and eventually when you get to a point where you're really comfortable, you know, you can do some fancy stuff. <laughs> maybe not an emulator for me because I'm very much used to console. Um, but, you, you know, you can play stuff there. And eventually just get so comfortable you can use different visual cues like making sure that uh, a certain you know set pixel like 
it's those things that you can you can do it different ways, like you know, placing it down very comfortably, already facing south to help for the iron dash. Um, like right there. Um, there's a lot of comfort that can be done with this. It is tricky, but I think again, having that one pixel away from the wall uh, issue is a bit of a pitfall for players. But uh, you know, take a screenshot so you can pause the video, uh, kind of look at the different position. Again, there's lots of different personal cues you can use, especially if you don't play as Link. You know, some people, again, will use the top of the hat, uh, you know, shadow, a sword. There's a bunch of different things that you can do, um, even for after placing the bomb and then trying to get your other position using this black bar in the hat, for example. Whatever works for you, um, just as long as you maintain those proper coordinates and positions. I don't think there's too much that I really need to go for. Again, this is kind of just an impromptu uh, raw take, so uh, <laughs> not not uh, not necessarily the cleanest attempt here. I'm going to look into um, you know improving different video tutorials and going over different things. So if you do have a request for something that you want to see, uh, do let me know. I have no problem making these videos. I often go over this stuff. Uh, live on stream. I put a couple of plugs off to the side and of course there's like <laughs> three input viewers here. Um, so you know you will not be wanting uh, for all the little technical stuff. I'll try my absolute best and yeah hope you enjoyed. If you do you know of course uh, don't get a like or whatever the cool kids do these days but uh, yeah hope that was helpful and uh, uh, yeah <laughs> talk to you later. Bye.